Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to uh, another YouTube video. So we are still sort of continuing with the um, Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Uh, and we're, we're kind of on episode four of the sort of dev box topic. Um, so be before I move any further though, I have to address the fact that I am now on 20K, over 20K subscribers. Um, blown away, if I'm honest, with 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 how quick uh, it has grown to that. You know, the the journey from from zero to ten k took me so long, but ten k to to twenty k has just been a massive trajectory. Um, and I'm hopefully people are enjoying the content. Like I said, you know, I'm getting really good good reports and good good comments and you know messages from people who who my content is helping. So that's all positive. But you know, I now want to look at. The next step now do you know what i mean the next 10k the next 20k so i'm going to continue to try and grow it and hopefully stuff like this this microsoft vdi series will, will help with that i am doing a giveaway i've got some some swag on um order some t-shirts to celebrate 20k so please keep an eye out for that i will when i get those I'll, I'll kind of do a video around that um but for now let's get started with today's video so we're still on the microsoft vdi series as i mentioned um, today is going to be um, part three of the DevBox architecture topic. So we're going to go back to that sort of diagram that I've shown in the last episode. Uh, but specifically today we're going to talk about the identity services and the user connectivity. And then we're going to continue with the DevBox um, deployment. Uh, we'll look at catalogs and configure catalogs today. Let's uh, obviously and, and go through that deployment. So this is this is a diagram I've shown already, and and what we're kind of focusing on is the the bottom left there where it says, um, you know, the the Entour ID bit really, um, as well as the um, bottom right where we've got the on-prem you know Active Directory, um, but also as I said we're going to be looking at and uh, talk about user connectivity, so the the general networking. So start let's talk about identity services first. Microsoft DevBox uses Microsoft Entour ID and optionally. Uh, on-premises Active Directory Domain Services or ADS as we can uh, ADDS as we can see in the bottom right of this image. Uh, Microsoft Entour ID itself provides user authentication for the Microsoft DevBox Developer Portal uh, as and device identity services for the Microsoft Intune, which we're going to go into as well at some point through that Microsoft Entour Hybrid Join or, or just the Entour Join as well. When you configure DevBoxes to use Microsoft Entour Hybrid Join. Um, Active Directory Domain Services is going to provide on-premises domain join for, for the dev boxes and user authentication for the sort of remote desktop protocol RDP connections. Now, th this is no different to AVD. I know we've not covered AVD in this series yet, but if you know AVD already, then it's no different. It's, it's the same sort of, the back end is all the same. Out of all the services and solutions we're talking about in this series, you know, dev box, Windows 365, AVD. The, the premises, the, the back end is all the same. So you're going to get all the same features, really, at some, in some way or another. When you configure dev boxes to use Entra join now, Microsoft Entra ID is going to provide that domain join mechanism for the dev boxes and that user authentication for the ARDP connections. Okay, so that's a little bit of an overview of the identity. Now, obviously, we, we're going to, as we deploy this, we'll show all the configuration for, for and we're going to focus on. I mean, I've got both options, if I'm honest. I've got, I can do the hybrid join and I can do Entra join. I think for the demos person, we'll just do Entra join um, to show that connectivity. The same end result's going to be the same, right? Let's talk a little bit about user connectivity now. So when a dev box is running, developers can connect to um, the, the dev box by using a remote desktop client like a Windows app, or, which we showed in, in the, remember in the, in the intro episode. Or you can do it directly from within the browser. We'll show both um, in, this, in this series. DevBox connectivity is provided by Azure Virtual Desktop, uh, so there's no, bound, no inbound connections direct from the internet are made to the DevBox directly. Instead, you've got um, the, the, the multiple different connections, uh, including from the DevBox to as you know the AVD endpoints, but from the remote desktop clients to the AVD endpoints as well. Uh, and there's no requirement to configure your dev boxes to make these connections. Microsoft dev boxes seamlessly integrates with AVD connectivity components uh, into the gallery or, or custom images as well. So again, that was just uh, some of the elements that I felt were missing from the architecture that I wanted to cover. Um, let's jump straight into the demo now. So we're going to be looking at the catalog, uh, dev box catalog. So please join me in the demo. Okay, so back in the demo portal now, just, just to explain 
a little bit about app catalog, you know, catalogs. We are going to be doing more in depth. You know, we've still got some more episodes to come in this DevBox series, so we are going to be covering um, catalog in a bit more detail. But essentially, DevBox users can customize their DevBox by using setup tasks. You know, for example, install additional apps they might need or, or software. Um, you know, cloning a repository and, and much more. And, and these tasks uh, are run as part of your DevBox creation process. But by using the DevBox customization and setup tasks, you can then reduce the number of VM images that you need to maintain. And those setup tasks are defined in a catalog. So that's what we're going to be setting up. And that can be a GitHub repository or an Azure DevOps repository. And you can attach one or more catalogs to a dev center. Okay. So we are in the Azure portal. We want to obviously go to, to dev center. Uh, let's go into our dev um, dev center here, uh, and as part of so we've done the networking, we, we've done the Azure Compute Gallery. Um, we want to go to Environment Configuration, and go to um, Catalogs. Now you can see we've already got a quick environment definitions here, and that has a a repository um, already set up. So uh, to add another catalog, uh, we can click on Add. Uh, give it a name. I uh, IT geek hyphen catalog hyphen zero one. So we can have a do as your DevOps, but we obviously need to make sure we have a DevOps organization, um, which which I've got one, which is just my default one here. And again, we need to make sure we've got a project set up so I could put it in in that, or I could you know if if I had a uh, I could create another one if I wanted to, but I was going to ask your DevOps to create that. Um, and then again, we can have use my identity or we can use personal token. So um, for the put again, same with GitHub, you can sign to GitHub with this and then you can uh, or use the, the, the quick start catalog type. So Microsoft quick start catalog will make it easier for you to get started with DevSet, especially when you're getting started. If this is the first time using it, probably better to use that. Um, and allows you to use those custom sort of customizations. So then, so you just need to tick the the box to say yes, I understand the catalog. Uh, it will allow developers to customize their dev box with PowerShell commands, uh, and then it gives you obviously a, 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 a it's already got set up a repo. Tells you about this the main branch. So this is in GitHub. Uh, it tells you the folder path is task. So and it says it's automatically going to sync. So you can click on add, and that will add a catalog. So again, have a play with that. Have a play with, you know, if you do have uh, Azure DevOps, have a play with adding that. If you want to do GitHub, have, you know, if you've got a GitHub repository of your own, connect that as well. And again, you can clone the URLs as well. Um, and you can sync it if anything. You can, so mine's connecting at the moment. Uh, so that's how you set up the catalogs. As, as we go along, we will do some, once we've got the DevBox up and running in the demo, we will look to do some customization so we can show how that works. At the moment, I just want to set up each element to show you before we get to deploying the DevBoxes, right? Um, so that was an, an, a quick episode. Just wanted to, you know, cover some more architecture uh, as well as talk, you know, do the catalog. Um, so hopefully you are enjoying this series, informative. If you do not use DevBox, so I definitely recommend you having a play with it. Um, I, I, I think it's a really good um, service, uh, you know, and a good addition to the Microsoft Cloud VDI sort of solutions. We are going to be covering a lot more stuff on use cases. You know, we've got a, I'll have an episode dedicated to use cases. Um, and, and probably have a, an episode on its own where we just complete the demo and just do a bit more um, practical element as well. So again, thank you very much for watching. Some useful links in the, in the URL. My, my obviously, um, socials are there as well as some information around Microsoft Learn and where some documentation you can find to do some more reading up. So thank you for joining me. Until next time, goodbye.